Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Casual Saturday. Saturday is the day of the week that I used to designate to taking a look at the kind of game that I don't normally feature on this channel. Games like Inside, games like What Remains of Edith Finch. And today, we're going to be taking a look at The Eternal Cylinder, which is easily the weirdest game I've played this year. I mean, seriously, it's, it's not even close. Once upon a time, in the age of the Eternal Cylinder, there lived a family of little creatures called the Trebum. Trebum are not the strongest, nor the fastest, and they do not have sharp teeth. They would make easy prey for the terrible force that came to their planet. But Trebum are loyal and resourceful and very, very stubborn. It is with such a trebum that our story begins. One clever little creature born into a cruel world who would be instrumental in bringing prosperity to its kind. And I've hatched. Hooray! It's good to be alive. Run! Something inside him said, run! Well, except for the fact that there is a dirty great big planet spanning cylinder behind me and it's rolling in this direction. Crushing everything in its path. And I am but a poor little lonely Trevor. And I can only do two things. Well, three. Run. Jump. Although well, not very high. Here it comes. <laughs> and snort stuff up through that dirty great big hooter on the front of my face that passes for a nose. Now, you remember I said of the three things that I could do, jumping was one of them, but I couldn't jump very high. Yeah, about that. And the cylinder doesn't really give a shit about my problems. Oh, it's getting awfully close. So I'm getting out of this one. The great crushing thing, the great cylinder, had stopped. Perhaps it was safe here for a little while. How quickly it learned to use its legs and its trunk. But these things were not so much learned as they were remembered. Perhaps, the little Trebum thought, they were a gift from the strange voice it heard in its mind. That too was a kind of memory. So, there is a survival element to the Eternal Cylinder. You do have to keep your little Trevon fed and watered, but some of the things that you hoover up with your schnozzle can be used to give yourself additional abilities. Right now, I only have three storage slots. If you have a look in the bottom left side of the screen, you'll see that I have plenty of water, I have two different types of edible mushroom, and the fourth slot contains some kind of spore, and if I consume that, as indicated by the tiny little lightning bolt symbol next to it, that's going to give me a new ability. Just when it was starting to get used to its legs, the food from the jumping creature gave it new ones. With the right substance as a catalyst, a trebum can transform and adapt to many challenges. Now, as well as using your schnozzle to suck stuff up, you can also use it to shoot stuff out. So the game suggested I squirt some water out at one of those flying bugs. Okay. Not exactly sure how that's helped me, other than showing me that it's something that I can do, but it has actually cost me some water. Oh well, um, fair enough. It's something that I can now do that I didn't know I could do a couple of minutes ago. There is also an element of inventory management going on here. Again, taking a look at the inventory, what I have stored in my internal pouch, for want of a better word, Three different types of edible mushroom. And there's a storage limit to each type, so what that means in practice is, no matter how hard I try to suck up that potentially useful orange thing, I can't because I don't have free inventory space. 
And I can solve that problem by either consuming whatever is in one of those slots, in this case three different types of edible mushroom, or spitting one of them out and clearing the inventory space. At this point I'd kind of been wandering around aimlessly for so long that the game gave me a little navigational marker. The game's way of saying, hey, stupid, go over there. Except for the grass growing on the old one's head, they were very much alike. Surrounded by this light, the Trebum knew things it had not known before. It knew the older Trebum had carried this light for a long, long time. And it knew that now that responsibility had passed to the next generation. Yes, this young Trebum had to carry the light to those great towers in the distance. It could have stayed here to learn many old things, but the cylinder would not allow it. Run, the inner voice said, run. The towers would not stop the cylinder unless they were activated. Run, little Trevon, or roll, roll for your life. Head up for one of those towers. Because these are the only things that can stop the cylinder, at least for a time. Quickly, the Trevon had to step on the symbol or the cylinder would not be stopped. Come on, come on, come on, come on, get on the thingy. Right, I'm on the thingy. It's it's doing something. You said if I stood on the thingy, it would stop the uh, the cylinder. Is it down here? No, it's definitely that's definitely the thingy. It's not stopping the cylinder. <laughs> it's still coming. Who booked me for this gig? Get my agent on the phone. <laughs> oh shit. I demand a refund. Oh, it stopped. The voice inside the Trebum's memories assured it that while the tower stood, the Trebum would be safe. The power of the eternal cylinder was contained for now. Right, so we're not going to die immediately. That's always nice to know. This relative tranquility gave the Trebum a chance to think about its family. Trebum are not meant to live alone, so where were the others? So, if at this point, much as I was, you're thinking, what the hell is going on here? Congratulations. Great minds think alike. Or possibly, it's fools never differ. Oh, that thing doesn't look very friendly. Oh no, that doesn't look very friendly. Hello. Do you want to be my friend? Oh, that would be a no. <laughs> but she'd probably get out of here. Um, yeah, so if you're thinking, what the hell is going on here? Just exactly what kind of crack pipe were these developers smoking? The kind of crack pipe that makes you see things like that. <laughs> then congratulations, because that's more or less exactly what I was thinking too. How to describe the Eternal Cylinder? It's kind of like No Man's Sky got really, really high and had a drug fueled three way with Spore and Lemmings. The Lemmings part, we are, well, we're getting a hint of here. This symbol is basically telling me that I'm going to need three Trebons in order to get through that door. So I have to find another two Trebon eggs and hatch them out. The No Man's Sky influence, well, you can see just by looking at it. And we've already had a hint of the Spore influence. By consuming certain things, we evolve new abilities. Hello, my name is Bob. You look very nice. Do you want to be my friend? Doesn't want to be my friend. Doesn't want to kill me either, so that's a plus. Right, let's, let's evolve ourselves some new abilities. You hear the sort of honking trumpet-like noises that this particular plant is making? I've just sucked down one of its seed pods. If I eat that seed pod, 
something's gonna happen. And there it is. I now have a trumpet on the end of my schnozzle. And this will allow me to scare off predators. So let's put that one to the test. Hey you, shithead. How do you like my scary noise? Yeah, he doesn't like that very much, does he? Those things are such pussies. I'm still going to need another two Trebin, though. And I've got to be honest, I don't even know what a Trebin egg looks like. Then by a massive stroke of luck, I just kind of, well, wandered right into another live Trebin. Finding another Trebin was a cause for joy. But this new friend was not well. Deep inside the memories it had inherited, the Trebum found the answer. To recover, its friend needed a very specific substance, which appeared as glittering clusters of crystal dust. So this new Trebum is basically suffering withdrawal, and I have to supply him with some sparkle dust, or at least that's what I got out of that. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But anyway, I have managed to successfully recruit another Trebin, but I'm going to need three in total. And this is kind of where the Lemmings thing comes into it. So I'm still controlling the original Trebin, and the one that I just recruited is following me around. And that's when I come across my first Trebin egg. Our young friend had found an egg, a Trebum egg, with one of his siblings inside. The egg had been abandoned but it could still be made to hatch. All that was needed was a source of heat. So I'm busy playing egg football when the game very helpfully tells me that I can actually pick this egg up and is this going to be a good enough source of heat? I mean, it looks... Yeah, it is! Hooray! I now have the three Trebin that I need. Fantastic. I will call you Bob. It's short for Kate. So with young Bob, short for Kate, added to my little band of three Trevin, I've now got the three dudes that I need to activate the thing. And they will feed themselves, by the way. You don't have to worry about them starving, as long as there's a supply of food around. Ooh, what's that? Looks like it's got an arse for a face. Hello! Do you want to be my... F he doesn't want to be my friend. Oh, Bob. I think it might be a good idea to run away, since that was the only Trebin I had that had evolved the ability to scare off predators, although it didn't seem to work too well. Um, maybe Arseface over there just isn't as big a pussy as Shithead. Either way, I'm not hanging around to find out, so I now have just the two Trebin, and neither of them have evolved any special abilities. Well, shit. So, back to the fart trumpet plant, chow down on one of its seed pods, and I should now, there it is, have the ability to scare off some of the less impressive predators. Now, unless I'm very much mistaken, it looks like there's a trebin egg on the middle of that pedestal in the middle of this pond, but well, I'm not very good at swimming. But I do appear to have sucked up something from the water. Let's go ahead and use that and see what it does. And... Ta-da! I am now Fat Bastard McTrebin. Which basically means I now have seven rather than four inventory storage slots. So that's good, I suppose. It's not helping me get that egg, though. There's got to be something I can do. Well, of course there is. And it is fairly obvious. And so, of course, it took me an embarrassing length of time to figure it out, but scuttling around in the pond there, there is a type of fish that if you consume... Yes, by all means, Bob, clear your nose first, but if you consume this fish, it's going to give you webbed feet. And... There it is. And that allows you to not only swim faster, but also actually jump out of the water, which means I can finally reach that trebin egg grab onto it and now I just need to introduce it to a source of heat and it's almost as if the game developers planned it this way but there's one right there so that should hatch and come on there it is and now we have our three trebin again exactly the number that we need to stand on the thing in front of the thing 
in order to open the thing. And if I can just get all three Trevin back there without getting any of them eaten by walking arseholes. Because once is an accident and twice is just downright careless. <laughs> then we can see what's going on. This door had been built for Trevor. It gave them hope that in this large and dangerous world, some places had been made for them. And we're in. I mean, I don't know what we're in, but clearly this is where we're meant to be. That's right, guys. High five. Now, you can at any point swap between each of the Trevon available to you just by tapping the Q key. And you don't have to worry about the ones that you're not directly controlling getting lost. They'll always find their way to you. So, different Trevon with different abilities you control at different times in order to do different things. Yeah, makes sense. Oh look, more sparkle dust. Yes, Bob does have a bit of a drug problem. Bob, you missed a bit. No, nope, there it is. Right. <laughs> right, there's probably going to be something else I need to pick up in here. And right now, even Bob's inventory is full, so I'm just going to chow down on a bit of mushroom. And then, onwards and upwards. So what's going on in here, Bob? So we've got one exit that's sealed off. We've got a sort of... Is that supposed to be a cube-shaped tremor? It's a cube with legs and a nose. Yeah. And a square-shaped hole. It's asking us to interact with it. So does that mean the cube goes into the hole? That would... That Somehow would this what? ancient statue transferred knowledge to the Trevor. Okay, so it's just a statue of a cube-shaped Trevor. And we have a compendium entry on an organic cube. Sounds like something I can eat. No, Bob. Ignore the angel dust. Get the organic cube. There it is. Shoot it off by squirting some water out of our schnozzle. Suck it up. And if I eat this, well, something's going to happen. And it's a kind of good news, bad news situation. Bob is now a cube-shaped Trevon with a drug problem, but he is not a cube-shaped Trevon with a drug problem and seven inventory slots anymore. So I'm going to switch control over to my second Trevon hoover up all of the excess stuff that Bob was forced to drop. And oh, hang on a second, there's another organic cube back there. Fantastic. So now I have two cube-shaped dog jobs, although only one of them is a cube-shaped dog job with a drug problem. And that allows us to get this door open. And there's an elder Trevon in here who's not dead. Inside the cave, a Trevon found a living elder. It had been waiting in this chamber for a long, long time. The Elder told them it was happy to see some friends before the cylinder came. It said, You are young, so you never knew the time when our people could shapeshift at will. We, Trebam, are inheritors of a vast tree of abilities. Abilities passed on to all future Trebam. But this power is being taken away. Beware the servants of the Cylinder. They will seek to hurt you at every opportunity, and they have the power to rob you of your abilities. But if you persevere, one day you will find a way to protect yourselves from their evil light. Farewell, my brave friends. I fear I am too old and tired to join you. May you find a way to prosper in this time of struggles. So, I'm sure by now you're probably getting the idea. I think the description of Spore crossed with Lemmings crossed with No Man's Sky is a pretty accurate one. You're also probably already figuring out whether you do or do not like the look of the Eternal Cylinder. And when I say like the look of the Eternal Cylinder, I don't just mean how it looks, I mean how it plays as well. It is a very weird game. But I do like that about it. Because it's a very brave choice of a game developer to do something like this that is completely outside of the box, because the safe choice would just be to produce generic first-person shooter number 3742. 
because people like that sort of thing. As soon as you start doing stuff like this that is so different, you immediately polarise your audience. And your audience isn't going to be that big to begin with, because, well, there's a reason why mainstream games are mainstream. They're the kind of games that most people like to play. So when you make a game like this, a game that isn't Deathloop, that isn't World of Tanks, it isn't Call of Duty, it isn't a reskin of the same football game you've been pushing out for the last 35 years, you're limiting the size of your initial audience. And the audience that remains, half of them are going to say, this is really, really weird. I love it. Unfortunately, the other half are going to say, this is really, really weird. I don't like it. So making a game like this, which is really, really weird, and that's exactly what Good Shepherd Entertainment have done, it's a very brave move. At the same time, though, because you're not trying to compete with the Calls of Duty and the Far Cries and the Maddens of this world, expectations are fairly low. So you can afford to be a bit more experimental and, well, weird. And because you are a small independent developer, you're not Electronic Arts, you're not Activision Blizzard, the development costs haven't run into the hundreds of millions of dollars, you can afford to take chances and, well, do weird things with the gameplay. Things that make your game stand out from the crowd. And they've definitely managed to do that with the Eternal Cylinder. And you don't have to shift that many copies in order for your game to be considered a success. And I, I really like the Eternal Cylinder, because, I mean, it is weird. And while the influences are fairly obvious, I mean, visually, No Man's Sky, gameplay-wise, Lemmings and Spore, it's still unlike any other game I've ever played. I mean, I have played Lemmings, but it was a very, very long time ago, and I didn't actually like it that much. And I've never played Spore, but I do like the Eternal Cylinder. While I absolutely accept that it probably is just a little bit too weird uh, to have any kind of mainstream success, I'm pretty sure the developers weren't expecting to have any mainstream success anyway, and they'll be quite happy if the game just succeeds on its own terms. And honestly, I think it deserves to. The Eternal Cylinder is available right now on the Epic Game Store for a very reasonable $29.99, although it's enjoying a 10% reduction until the 18th of October, which means that right now you can snap it up for only $26.99 in the USA, or £21.59 here in the UK. Hopefully by now you've all seen enough to know whether or not you want to take a chance on it, but honestly, at that kind of price, it really is an absolute bargain. Well, anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you're at least slightly interested in the Eternal Cylinder. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.